Hello. So today's video is different than the one I originally was planning to do this week. Reason why is because a friend of mine had found my book cover on a negative site about book covers in general. And I decided, you know what, it's time I talk about my book covers. So maybe this will help any self-published author out there trying to decide on their own book cover. Let's begin. So here we're looking at the book cover to my first book, The Guardian of Light. Now, you'll notice, first off, that it looks very plain. And that was kind of the general idea. Another complaint on this book cover was that it was hard to read. Now, digitally, I can understand that. However, in order for everything to be placed just right, I had to put the text where the text is. And when we get to the side, you'll understand why. Now, where the title is placed on every single book cover in this series, the spot of the title doesn't really change. The subtitles come in and fill up the missing gap of space there. Another complaint was about the necklace. Now, I did not choose this necklace at random. This is an actual necklace I do own. And I bought it for a very specific reason. Because this necklace is in the book. This is a reoccurring item that is very important to the story. Now, let's talk about probably the most glaring thing on this cover, the solid white background. I want you to pay very special attention to that as I move into the other book covers. And at the end, once I've gone through, I'll explain why the background is so important. Now, my name, down in the corner, that is actually reminiscent to the first version of this book cover. Now, as you can see here, with the two book covers side by side, the original was a much more purplish color, and I was just, I wasn't 100% happy with that book cover, so when I made the white book cover, I kept the purplish color for my name as a callback to the person who helped create the first book cover. Moving on to the side, the scroll with the number one is so A, when it's sitting on your shelf, because hopefully you have the paperback, you Lined up in a row, you can see which one is book one. If you know, most books in a series will have the volume number or book number on the side somewhere. The title is the only thing on the side, and it can be clearly visible. On the back cover, I went with a free stock footage scroll that I found and I used that as the text box to put the synopsis of the book on. Now the reason why is because I wanted something relevant to the story which there are scrolls in the story and I wanted something that no matter what I put on the back was going to show clearly the text. So, moving on to book two. The Guardian of Light, Trial by Fire and Ice. Now, I also want to make a statement here to say, yes, I know that most authors are told not to create their own book covers. I do create my book covers. Originally, with book two here, 
I was going to go for the same aesthetic as book one. You have the title in the exact same spot. You have this added subtitle now, Trial by Fire and Ice. But what I went for here was I wanted clearly the word fire to be on fire and the word ice to have literal ice hanging off it. Now, I did a ton of learning to find everything I needed to find and alter text images to make the word fire appear as it's still gold underneath, but it's on fire, and the word ice to have actual ice hanging off it. I learned a lot about Photoshop, fonts, and that's how I came up with the effects you'll see on the cover. Now, again, this may not show up super crystal clear for digital, but on the actual paperbacks, it looks really good, and I was really happy with it. Um, originally, in the first version, I did not have those faded snowflakes in the back. It wasn't until I released book three that I actually added in these faded snowflakes. But again, most of the story takes place in the North Pole. Now, the hat, I actually own that hat. I bought the hat. I took a photo of it. Remove the background just so I could put this on the cover. I did change the font color for my name down in the corner so it would be a little bit darker. And you'll notice going over this, you'll notice it's a, not quite exactly white. It's more of a grayish color. Now again, I'm going to point this out because I... This will be key as we get deeper into the series. Now we're going to move into book three. Now for book three, again, the main title right there in the same spot. I added in a new subtitle, keeping the font pretty much the same, but... There's this colorful orb in the back. Now, this orb was something I created from tons and tons of free stock footage effects. The map in the background, another free stock footage photo effect that I found. The darker, you'll notice that now there's an even darker gray. I kept my name down in the corner the same from book two, but it really makes the orb in the center pop, this darker color, which I loved. And it shows off the wide variety of colors that I used. Now, again, I photoshopped. It took me hours putting this together, getting it exactly the way I wanted it to represent the item that's in the book. Now, that's the most important thing for the first three books, is that every single thing on the cover plays a part in the story. Even down the road, those there are more hidden things on the covers that play important roles in the story. The side, again, you have the title, shows up pretty clear. On the back, you have the scroll, which tells you what's going to happen in the book. So, moving on. Book four. Now, for book four, this is where things get really interesting. Yes, there is a Santa hat on the cover, and I do own a Santa hat. I own quite a few, in fact. But I do own this one. And... I did find the Shatter, this is actually two different stock footages of Shattered Glass, and I overlaid them on the Santa hat 
to make it look like the Santa hat was shattering like glass. The subtitle. I went through a lot of learning and researching to find out how to pull this effect off with the text. And that's to make it look glitchy. Also down here where my name is, I added in a shattering font on my name. So it appears as more things besides just the hat is being shattered. If you notice, at least on the paperback, here where the glass for the SHA, that image inside the glass is actually bigger and fuzzier than the rest of the word shattered. Almost like the glass is magnifying it. These were just little details I went through and really put. The title, The Guardian of Light, is still in the same spot. There is a swirlish pattern all over the place. It's to provide a sense of vortex. It's a, a sense of hypnosis, kind of. Also, you'll notice all these little faded images around the corner. Some of these I created from scratch. Some of these I did not, and they are just stock footage PNGs. But all of these are referenced in the book. Every single thing, all the hidden details are in the book. So if you've read the book, you'll understand what they are. Once again, on the side, it clearly comes up with the title. But you'll notice, once again, that it's a very much darker than it, Book 3 was. Whereas Book 3 was slightly a lighter gray, and Book 2 is even a lighter gray. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just stop here for a moment and show you all four book covers. Now, you'll notice... As the book covers go from beginning to end, they are getting darker. Now, when I started with book one, I took a black, just a black picture. Solid black, no color at all. And I actually put that on book one. I turned the opacity of that part of the footage all the way to zero. Then when I created book two, I took that same black image and I upped it to 20%. When I got to book three, I upped it to 40%. Book four is sitting at 60%. Book five will be at 80%. And book six, the final book in this series will be at its full 100%. Now, the reason why I did this was because as the story goes on, the story gets darker. So each book cover kind of represents how dark the story is bound to get. And this was just one of the many things I did to add some extra depth to the books. Yes, there might be colorful images on book covers because I want those things to stand out. I want it to draw your attention. Going back to book four, if you look at the cover, the hat, the glass, the titles really draw your attention. And I was quite amazed when I received my first copy of book four and I saw how beautiful it looked. Do they work digitally? I did the very best I could to make them work digitally. However, I'm still learning. Maybe I need to find a different way, a different size or something. And I'll learn that in time. 
But on paperback, having seen all four book covers so far, and looking forward to my fifth and sixth book cover, I'm really happy with the direction my book covers are going. So, hopefully, this helps some of you out there. Hopefully, it gives you some ideas if you are going to create your own book cover. Now, on this website, I was also, there was a tag about me giving credit where credit is due. Again, most of this stuff is stuff that I have. You know, I have a Santa hat. I have the top hat. I have the necklace. The person who helped me with the font, because at the time when I started this, I didn't know nothing about Photoshop. I've had to learn so much about Photoshop, it's not even funny. She actually showed me and gave me the template of what I use now for my main series book covers. In fact, it was through her and everything I learned about Photoshop that anything I do, whether it be here in a video or any other book covers I've done, this is the reason why I know how to do the things I do. And so much time and planning went into creating each book cover. This isn't like I just slap something together from some custom thing on Amazon or Lulu or any of those other programs that let you create your own book cover because this I could not have done with these four book covers in anything like that. And I have met authors who said they just used the free thing that those websites provided. And I was like, you know, if I'm not the world's greatest book cover artist, I don't aspire I'm not aspiring to that but I think I did a pretty really good job on um, at least with my own maybe it's because I know the story so well and this is something very important to me that I do know the story so well so if you don't have the time if you don't know what you're doing and you don't want to learn how to do it, yes, you probably should get a professional book cover person to help you. Just to make sure you put their name in the book. That's what really confused me with that site when it said credit where credit is due. Because, like, well, clearly they didn't look inside the book. They clearly didn't buy the book because that's normally where credit is given inside the book. So in conclusion, I just want to add, if you cannot afford to go and get a professional cover artist to make your book cover, that doesn't mean you're not a real writer. If you everyone could afford the high prices some book cover artists charge, like the best book cover artists charge, we'd all go out and do it no problem. You can find people on Fiverr who will do book covers. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like the covers they create for you. You can try and make your own. Using whatever means to make your own doesn't mean it's going to necessarily be the worst cover going or the best cover going. Remember, book covers, they're like art. Everyone's view of a book cover, of your book cover, is going to be different. So when people do sit there and say that my book covers aren't great, that's their choice. I asked a ton of people 
what they like about book covers. And I gave plenty of examples. And I asked, when you see book covers on the shelves at the store, what turns you off from that book? What don't you like? I watched a bunch of different videos. One of the common complaints I often heard was people on the covers. A lot of readers don't seem to like people on the covers. I avoided that with mine because I heard that so much. Also, like I said, it's a matter of perspective. Just because you don't like a piece of art that someone made doesn't mean someone else won't like it. So, closing out. Just remember, this is your creation. Even if you got a professional book cover artist to make your book cover for you, you still have a say. You still have to choose. Who's to say you are making the right choice? There is no perfect book cover. So just keep that in mind. I hope you will all join me next week when I reveal the book cover to book five in my epic fantasy series. And I also want to add just a quick little thing. I also saw a comment left by somebody who watched my channel and then commented on somebody else's post about my channel that I kept referring to my books. Well, this is an author's YouTube channel. My main goal is ultimately, is to promote my books. I don't mind helping out other authors and reviewing the works of other authors, but I'm more likely going to compare their work to something I've done. I'm not comparing it in the sense of I know better than them. It's just in my own writing, this is what I do, and I say whether I think the author did better than me or if I didn't particularly care for something that author did. Does that make them wrong? No. It makes them different. Because we all, every writer, every author is different. Everyone can tell the same story in a different way. But yes, I am going to keep pointing out my books because I am an author who is trying to get you interested in my product, while at the same time trying to help out other people that I'm trying to promote. So all the book reviews I've done, whether it's a self-published author or a big author, If I like their books, and I'm telling you to go out and buy their books, it's because I really did enjoy the story. And I think that other people will enjoy the story. And I'm trying to get you interested, not based on the cover, but based on the actual story inside. And yes, I'm going to compare... And maybe that'll get you interested in two stories at the same time. If you would like to check out this book series, please click the links below. If, if you have not checked out this book series yet, or if you're curious about this book series at all, at the end of this month, I will be doing a giveaway on Amazon for free ebooks. Now, I'm planning right now to do books one and two as free ebooks during the last week of April. However, if my subscriber count gets up to 100 subscribers by the end of the month, then during the first two weeks of May, 
I will give away free ebooks of books three and four. So, if you are a reader or if you are a writer and you are interested in seeing the, what this story has, how the book covers go deep into the books themselves, make sure to tune in next Monday for the book five cover reveal and trailer release. I want to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe today and click that notification bell so you know exactly when a new video comes up. I give away free digital codes to movies every time I hit 10 subscribers. We just recently hit 40 subscribers. So I'm looking forward to doing more of those. Hopefully I can do a lot more giveaways if we can get that subscription count up by the end of the month. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next time.